Good morning, I'm Carl Felpern. This is our 918 breakfast table. My friend Emily is going to show us how to prepare a meal and how this table fits the lifestyle it was intended for. Hi, I'm Emily and I live in Berkeley, California. Um, among my many interests are baking and cooking and recently I've developed a specific interest in French baking and in creating things at home that one might associate with buying at neighborhood bakeries. This morning I'll be serving breakfast on my friend Carl's breakfast table that he designed and created. This is our number 918 uh, kitchen table. It's designed for breakfast nooks. It's made out of cherry with a walnut inlay. It measures 42 inches long by 36 inches wide. Uh, it, it has design elements of the uh, green and green 1907 Robinson House table. But again, it's a breakfast table, it accommodates two people, and it's not really designed for any more. This morning I've made two baked goods. I've made a French baguette, um, and I've also made croissants. And both of these recipes are taken from Julia Child's cookbook, from Julia Child's kitchen, um, and both can be found on my blog and bakes. So for both the baguette and the croissants, what you really need more than anything else is time. And in the case of the croissants, lots and lots of butter as well. Um, but it's time that makes the yeast rise, and it's time that makes the butter firm up so that when you actually pull it out of the oven many hours later, you end up with very nice finished products. When it comes to the specifics of making the croissants, you start out just like you would with any yeast bread. So with your yeast and your water and your flour mixed together, and then you add a little bit of oil to compensate for the difference between French butter and American butter, and you also use some more milk. Once you mix it all with the flour, you knead it very briefly, and then there are two initial rises that last about five hours. If you'd like, you can also put it in the refrigerator overnight at that point. After that, you start incorporating the butter, and you do this with a series of four turns, where you pretty much mush the butter all over the croissant dough, then roll it out four times so that it gets really well incorporated into the whole dough. After that, you let the dough chill for at least two hours, or you can again put it in the refrigerator overnight. Then you can form the croissants by rolling out the dough into several pieces, cutting each piece into two triangles, and then rolling each triangle individually. They sit for about two hours after that and bake for about 15 minutes. In describing craftsman furniture, some people say head, heart, hands. I think the same thing can be used to describe homemade cooking like this. You need to use your head because if you put in too much yeast or too little flour, you'll end up with a product that's not really right. But of course you have to use your heart as well, because without really putting the time into it and thinking about sharing your finished product with friends and family, you won't get nearly as good of a baked good. And then of course you have to use your hands, because you're baking and you're kneading the dough and everything else that you need to do. I think that both baked goods like this and furniture like Carl's is part of a lifestyle that really prizes the simplicity of things done well. The table is 36 inches wide by 42 inches long, has a 1 3 quarter inch solid cherry top and base. It has design elements from the Robinson House of Green and Green of 1907, but is essentially an original design. The table is designed for two people who love each other and who want to share intimate moments. It doesn't really work, as you can see, to have a third person sitting at the table. That can happen occasionally, but it's not something which is, is really comfortable. It, what is important is to have a nice view, which helps to enjoy the intimacy of the two people outside. 